are you or were you hire an employee or something else? The difference can have serious consequences. In this video, we'll look at the California laws answering that question. I'm attorney Steve Matcha. I've helped many employees resolve workplace issues, and I encourage you to reach out to me with any legal concerns. Labeling, in other words, classifying, workers can happen in two ways. Sometimes everyone agrees that a worker is an employee, but they disagree on what rights they have. For example, some employees get paid overtime and some don't. That has to do with classifying employees as non-exempt, meaning they get overtime, or exempt, meaning they don't. There's another situation in which it's not clear if a worker is an employee at all, and those workers can be classified as either employees or independent contractors. And that's the focus of this video. So what difference does it make? Well, classifying workers can lead to serious legal problems. From an employer's perspective, the risks include fines and penalties, lawsuits, and liability for unpaid payroll taxes, social security contributions, unemployment insurance, and workers' compensation premiums. From an employee's perspective, misclassification can lead to lost pay, increased taxes that need to be paid quarterly, and not receiving employee rights and benefits, like family medical leave, paid sick days, and unemployment insurance benefits, to name a few. So how can we tell if a worker is an employee? The current standard is a mix of old and new law. So to understand the answer to that question, it's helpful to look at legal history and we'll wrap it up by explaining the current rules. In 1989, the California Supreme Court needed to decide a dispute when a deputy labor commissioner penalized S.G. Borello and Sons for not having workers' compensation coverage for the 50 migrant harvesters of the Borello cucumber crop. The court established a balancing test to decide if a worker is an employee or an independent contractor. With a balancing test, courts consider various aspects of a situation to make a ruling about it, and we'll take a closer look at those factors later in this video. With the Borello test, some of those factors can make a worker seem like an employee, while other factors can make the same worker seem like an independent contractor, so it hasn't always been clear how the Borello test applies to some jobs. After Borello, the law on worker classification was fairly stable for about 20 years. In 2018, the California Supreme Court needed to decide a dispute between Dynamics, a same-day delivery company, and its drivers. The drivers claimed they were not classified as employees and did not receive the rights and benefits of employees. The court established the ABC test, in which workers are presumed to be employees and less employers can prove the test's three requirements, which we'll explore later in this video. While Dynamics's ABC test arguably simplified the Borello balancing test, after Dynamics, the rules for worker classification became a bit more complex. In 2019, California Assembly Bill, or AB, 5 revived the older Borello test for certain jobs, and 2020 brought at least two significant developments, including AB 2257 and Proposition 22. AB 2257 expanded AB 5's list of jobs tested with Borello, and Uber, Lyft, DoorDash, Instacart, Postmates all pooled more than $200 million to successfully convince California voters to vote yes on Prop 22, thereby classifying app-based drivers as independent contractors. While the drivers were thereby excluded from many employee rights, Prop 22 granted them at least 120% of minimum wage, started them with a mileage reimbursement of 30 cents per mile, subsidized health care insurance, and provided them on-the-job injury or death insurance, sort of like workers' compensation. Prop 22 was later found unconstitutional, an appeals court then found it mostly constitutional, and it may end up being further appealed to the Supreme Court. So, 
Misclassification law can be complex. It's evolving. And if it's an issue for you, you'd be wise to consult with an attorney knowledgeable in this area. You get it. Be that as it may, let's go ahead and simplify it. First, there's the Borello balancing test. As of 2020, I believe it applies to about 109 categories of workers. Under the Borello test, we balance several factors to determine if a worker seems more like an employee or an independent contractor. Again, some of those factors can make a worker seem like an employee, while others can make the same worker seem like an independent contractor. So we look at all of the factors together to see which way the classification leans. Fair warning, there are quite a few factors. So let's get into it. Basically, we ask, does the company have a lot of control over how the job is done? Is the worker's job a regular or important part of the company's business? Does the worker own a separate business doing the same job for other companies? Does the company or the worker provide the tools and equipment needed for the job? Did the worker have to buy or invest in their own equipment to do the job? Does the work require special skills? Is a job usually done under the company's direction or by a specialist without supervision? Can the worker make more or less money based on how well they manage the job? Is a job for a set amount of time or ongoing? Is the relationship between the worker and the company long or short term? Is the worker paid by the hour or for the entire job? Does the worker hire other people to help with the job? Can the company fire the worker at any time? Or is there a contract that says when the job will end? And do both the worker and the company genuinely believe the worker is an employee or an independent contractor? So that's the Borello test. Then there's the ABC test. It's basically considered the default rule, so we'll get into a little bit more detail with examples. Under this test, the worker is considered an employee unless the company can prove three points. First, the worker has control over how to do the work and the hiring company doesn't have close oversight. For example, a magazine could hire a freelance writer for an article. The writer has control over how to research and write the article, and the magazine only specifies the topic and deadline. Second, the job is not part of the company's normal business operations. For example, if a bakery hires a plumber to fix a leak, that plumber is doing work outside the bakery's usual business of baking and selling baked goods. Third, the worker has an established business doing the same kind of job for other companies. So for example, a company could hire a graphic designer to make its logo. And this graphic designer has a graphic design business and does work for other clients. I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, feel free to contact me with your legal questions or for a friend. And remember to like, share, and subscribe for more videos like this. Thanks for watching.